Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a fantastic day. The God of the Bible is alive and well, and he's moving by his spirit. I want you to know I'm encouraged by the things that I'm seeing taking place uh, in the earth, things that I see taking place, whether it's with voting, with politics, whatever is going on, I'm praying for you I'm praying for our nation. I'm praying that God would look with favor on America and have mercy upon us and that God would do would, will do what I know that he will, you know, and, and, and that is this. God never leaves himself without a, a witness and he's never left without a remnant and as being a part of the witness and the remnant of the God of the Bible, I'm saying to the God of the Bible, Lord, remember me, God send revival. Now, I know that that which is determined must be done and the things that God said are going to take place must take place. But in between those times, I'm asking God for mercy and for grace. And my friends, I want you to know he's passing out mercy. He's passing out grace and he's doing great things. Now, before I close today and invite you to join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study, and I want to thank you for how you tune in and how you faithfully watch us. I am moved, Brother Gary, by our uh, listening audience. For th Those are our friends who tune in from around the world, from around the world, and people who are watching from all over America. I just got a, a, a call today of a young lady who is coming in to visit the church. She's coming in to uh, fight the good fight of faith at the abortion clinic and then staying over for uh, the, the, the Sunday service. And we have people who basically fly in from somewhere in the United States of America almost weekly to be a part of the move of God. And I'm grateful to God uh, for his, his, uh, his power. And I'm grateful to God for, for you, my friends. You know, the Bible speaks uh, of, uh, of people who would travel near and far and who would go to and fro to hear the word of the Lord. And my friends, there is a word from the Lord, and God is moving by his spirit in these last days, and I am excited about the wonderful things that the Lord is doing. Now, listen to this. There's a couple of things I want to share with you today, and um uh, and I want you to hear me, and I want you to hear me uh, both uh, naturally and spiritually speaking, and the Lord will bless you real good. Now, the first thing that I want to mention to you is I want to mention our flags. Now, from time to time, we get comments uh, on the, the, uh, the rainbow flag right off of my uh, left shoulder here uh, is our Jesus pride flag. And from time to time, uh, people uh, g give comments about the rainbow flag that we have hanging up in the sanctuary. Now, I tell you, I understand the comments, and that's why we display them. I understand why some get confused, and that's why we proudly display them. Um, and, you know, people uh, have written or people have said, well, what about the flags? Uh, are you promoting LBGTQ or maybe there are people in the LBGTQ plus community who may see our flags and go, well, this is a LBGTQ plus inviting church, uh, a tolerant church where, where, where we can go there and, and we can uh, live the lifestyle and be celebrated because after all, there's the flag. Now, my friends, uh, regardless to who you are, I, I, I want to say that the only reason that there is confusion at all is that the church has not done a good job and that Christians do not, as they used to, read the Bible. Now, you may not know this, but God created the rainbow. The God of the Bible created the rainbow. There is scripture concerning the rainbow and the purpose of the bow that we as members of the body of Christ have allowed a group of people 
to redefine God's rainbow to the point that Christians will see it and get confused and assume that we're making a statement that we're not. I tell you, it says that we need to take another look at the scripture. The Bible says in Genesis chapter number nine and verse 13, God said, I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. It shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and and every living creature of all flesh and, and the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh and the bowl shall be in the cloud and I will look upon it. And I, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, this is the token of my covenant, which I have established between me and all the flesh that is upon the earth. What a beautiful, beautiful sign. What a beautiful token, the rainbow that the God of the Bible put in the sky. Every time we see it, we should re be reminded of God's grace and God's mercy. And I believe that churches everywhere should display the rainbow. Now, what we do here, we, we use the rainbow with the seven colors. If you've taken the time to count them, we use the seven colors, not the six. And uh, as you know, in the LBGTQ plus community, they've added to some of their newer rainbows, black and brown, because what they're trying to do, and many are falling for it, not this preacher, not this church, Many are falling for it, however. They're trying to uh, align themselves with the plight of the black and brown people in this country. I want to know at what time in America has African Americans ever been as protected as the LBGTQ uh, community? I mean, you can't even disagree with them. You can't have an argument with them. If you disagree on any issue, any subject, for any reason, you are labeled as either someone who is spewing hate or as someone who is sick because you have a phobia. Phobia, a phobia is an unreasonable fear. So if you disagree with the LBGTQ plus community on any issue, the problem is it's you, you're homophobic. And if you happen to believe, as I do, that no matter what a man does, he cannot turn himself into a woman. And no matter what a woman does, she can't turn herself into a man. And by the way, science agrees with me. Biology agrees with me. The DNA agrees with me. So I guess science is sick. Biology is sick. DNA is sick if, because the, the evidence is on our side that this cannot be done. But if you believe that it can't be done, which, you know, uh, until the other day was common knowledge and common sense and generally accepted, then you're called transphobic. And what we have done, and shame on the body of Christ, we have surrendered God's rainbow. If there are any pastors watching, any church people watching, members of a church that don't have a rainbow displayed in your church, talk to your preacher. Tell them, man of God, let's put the rainbow up and let's explain to the people what the rainbow is all about. And let's display God's beautiful bow because he's coming back. <laughs> he, he's coming back. He's coming again. And, uh, and, uh, and listen, uh, in Raleigh, it's raining today. And I, I'm enjoying the rain, but here's what I do know. I know it won't rain for 40 days and 40 nights. I know it won't. The whole earth won't be flooded because of, of the bowl, the, the, the covenant that God made between us and him. And what a mighty God. So when you see 
anything from the upper room and you see the rainbow flags uh, uh, proudly displayed, just know that we're making a statement. We're saying to the LBGTQ community and to everyone else, we are not going to allow you to commandeer God's rainbow. What are they going to commandeer next? The, the, the cross? What are they going to commandeer next? You see, the, the dove. And, and the thing that uh, kind of disturbs me a little bit is that Christians have become such fuddy-duddies. We've become such... Uh, pushovers. We, we fold like a cheap tent. We don't stand and fight. We don't defend anything. We assume, we assume that speak the truth, truth in love actually means whisper and stand for nothing. We, we assume that love your neighbor as yourself now means agree with what Ever your neighbor is doing. We assume that God is love means now that we're supposed to preach a gospel that is not convicting, that has no teeth, that has no uh, uh, thou shalt and thou shalt not. I mean, I'm telling you, it's kind of pathetic. It, it's kind of embarrassing that we become so weak. So I'm saying to all the Christians who are watching today, man up. And woman up and let the God of the Bible refill you and fill you again with his Holy Spirit and let him give you some uh, <laughs> some righteous indignation. I start to say something else. Let him give you some righteous indignation where where sin will still offend you and where you will speak up uh, for the things of God and not be pushed in some corner and you're quiet over there, you know, you're not going to say anything. I just keep my thoughts to myself. I just keep my feelings to myself. I'm not going to say anything about anything. Well, I tell you what, I'm glad Jesus didn't do that. I'm glad Paul didn't. I'm glad Peter didn't. I'm glad uh, uh, that all of the other disciples and the Christians down through the years didn't take that position. Otherwise, a biblical Christianity probably we wouldn't exist today. Do your part. Do your part. And just know when you see our rainbow, please don't think LBGTQ. Don't let them screw with your mind like that. As a Christian, you ought to think grace of God, mercy of God, power of God. We serve the God who controls thunderstorms. There is no force on earth more powerful than a thunderstorm, a thunderstorm, an earthquake, these things which are controlled by God. And lastly, the Bible predicted that days like this would come. God said in, in, in uh, Amos chapter number 8, and, um, and, and, and verse 11, it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, and uh, look at this, nor, of, 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 uh, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And many preachers from time to time read this passage and they say, you see, this means that people won't hear, won't, will not desire to hear the truth. Well, it's not, this, this scripture is not referencing the people. It's referencing the preacher. Because notice the next verse says, and they shall wander from sea to sea and from, uh, from the north even to the east. And they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. That is, people would travel great distances. We see it just about every Sunday here. Great difference distances at their own expense to find a church that is open, to find a preacher who still believes that the Bible is the word of God, to find people who still believe in praising God and having church and uh, our church don't look like uh, a rock and roll stage. You know, people don't, don't, don't tune into up room and think they're looking at a club. There are no strobe lights. We don't have smoke machines and all that kind of stuff. Praise the Lord. You don't need all that to preach the gospel. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm not trying to remind people of what they came out of. Because the Bible teaches if you're mindful of what you came out of, you, you, it increases the likelihood that you may go back in. No, no, I want to remind people of the light. So when we have our services, the, the, uh, the sanctuary is not dark, you know, 
No, the lights are on so people can pull out their Bibles and read along with me. And people are coming from to and fro to hear the word of God. Now, my time is up. I love you. I love you. Now, I'm not fussing, but I, listen, you stop being confused when you see God's rainbow. And if you don't have one displayed uh, uh, at your church, display it and put something on it. Write Jesus Pride or write, write the scriptures uh, on it that I just read to you. Hey, make a stand. Say something. Do something. If not now, then when? If not uh, there, then where? And if not you, then who? <laughs> Now join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> yes, I look, I look at this. I, I, I turned the, uh, the computer on, Bible study. Tonight, we are going to study the word of the Lord together. God bless you.